We have various experts you, today who are saying this is a time the governments, and I say governments, have to step up with whatever it takes to fix this. Are they right? Yes. Uh, this is not going to repair itself. The epidemic, pandemic, is not going to be stopped uh, by itself. The downturn in markets is not going to be stopped by itself. The potential downturn in economies is not going to be stopped uh, by itself. Governments need to come up with a program that is coordinated, coordinated across the U.S. government, coordinated between the U.S. government and other governments, coordinated with the international institutions. They need a program that is comprehensive, that addresses the financial difficulties created by lack of uh, credit, that addresses the need for maintaining demand at a time when pe people's paychecks are going to be uh, cut back, that is uh, investment-oriented, uh, that is addressing each of the aspects of this problem in some coherent uh, way. But we need something that is comprehensive, coordinated, and coherent. And at this point, we're not close uh, to comprehensive, coordinated, and coherent. Uh, we're seeing individual measures but they come out of any uh, context, out of any framework, out of any overall explanation. Last week we saw the Federal Reserve cut on an emergency basis, 50 basis points. That certainly didn't get the job done. If anything, it seemed to have a contrarian effect. Is that because it was not coordinated? It was not enough? Why did that not work? It came outside of any context. No context of international action no context of an overall strategy for U.S. recovery, no strategy of a plan in place for addressing financial actions. I mean, the impression left was that the Fed acted on Tuesday because Jay Powell said on Friday that it was going to act, and Jay, Jay Powell said on Friday that it was going to act because he was nervous that the market was going down and the president was tweeting up a storm. Uh, no sense that this was part of working with other countries, working with uh, the IMF, working in the context of a set of actions directed at uh, the health fundamentals. No sense. You have uh, the president's leading economic advisor, the head of his National Economic Council, saying there's absolutely no need for substantial uh, fiscal stimulus, even in the face of monetary policy being out of room and the biggest decline uh, we've ever seen in point terms uh, in the stock market. So I think that these problems can be addressed. They can't be resolved immediately. We don't have that much power over uh, microbes. But there needs to be a sense that there's somebody with an overall understanding calling shots, being transparent and uh, truthful, and we don't have any of that right now. Uh, you came back into government uh, after the great financial crisis had started, but you helped deal with that, the aftermath of that, 2009 and thereafter. How does this compare to that? What is similar? What is different from what we're seeing now? You don't yet have the sense of pervasive, imminent financial failure and breakdown the kind of stuff that makes people worry about whether you're going to be able to get cash out of ATMs. You don't have that kind of thing yet at this point, even after uh, today's dislocations. And that means you don't have the tinder for wealth losses as large as the wealth losses coming out of the stock market that we saw in 2008 yet. On the other hand, you also have a fundamental kind of economic problem entirely apart from finance that in many ways is more serious than the one you had in uh, 2008. Nobody knows for sure, but there's every reason to think that in terms of economic dislocation, 
we may still be in the first inning with respect to the damage uh, that uh, the virus is going to do. The vast, vast majority of Americans don't yet know anyone who has come down with the coronavirus. I would expect that three, six months from now, we will all know many people who have gotten the coronavirus. Now, the vast majority of them will recover. Let me say that again. The vast, vast majority of them uh, will uh, recover. But that doesn't mean there won't be very, very substantial dislocation of economic activity as people pull in their horns, as they uh, stay home, as they don't go out to work, as they don't go out uh, to eat. As everyone goes to ground, it may start to feel like every day is Sunday in terms of people not going off to work, in terms of places, stores, uh, places of business uh, being uh, closed. And that's going to have a set of effects that are going to make people feel much more apprehensive. As a policymaker, how do you strike the balance? On the one hand, it may slow down the virus, if not stop it, by having more quarantines, having more businesses shut down, having more schools shut down. On the other hand, that exacerbates the economic problem. You're doing some damage on the economic side. How do you strike that balance? Is there a danger of going too far too fast with actually shutting things down? Or do you simply have to shut down the virus as best you can? There is a danger, and you have to analyze each proposed measure and each possible step on a step-by-step -step basis. There are many trade-offs. Uh, one of the issues with having people stay home from school is that if kids stay home from school, their parents are going to stay home from work. And when their parents are health workers, that could be a pretty substantial uh, problem, particularly as uh, the caseload mounts. So I don't think there's a simple way to generalize other than the need to analyze carefully, thoughtfully, and in evidence-based uh, ways each proposed step. I don't think that tweets are a fruitful way of carrying out uh, that uh, analysis or showing the requisite respect for expertise, uh, David. In general, I think we're probably in more danger of being a bit behind the curve mm. on measures like educating people to be careful in their health habits. Particularly, I don't think the point that it's essential to uh, be very careful around the, the elderly or those who may for some reason have been immunocompromised, that it's particularly important for those who are at serious risk of being contagious to uh, be careful. I don't think we're getting uh, a set of these messages out as effectively as we can. There are reports that the president's on his way back to the White House, even as we speak, to consider possible fiscal intervention. There seems to be something of a debate within the administration whether, if there is fiscal intervention, it is broad-based, something like, for example, payroll tax relief, on the one hand, affect everybody who pays payroll taxes, or on the other hand, for example, uh, 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 sick pay for the people who actually are affected by this. Do you have an instinct whether you go broad base with fiscal stimulus or more narrow, micro-targeted, as Larry Kudlow, the president's advisor, said? Um, David, I, I don't think this is a micro problem. And so I don't think micro-targeting is going to be sufficient. I think the right discussion, is, when you talk about micro and macro, is not an either-or discussion. It's a both-and uh, discussion. And so, yes, I think it's clear we need to do things about sick pay, in part just as a health measure, to make sure that people who are sick and at risk of being contagious uh, don't uh, go to work. But I also think, especially after today's market performance and what markets are saying, not just about the depth of the decline, but if you look at forward markets, forward markets are saying that serious problems, inflation far below target, is going to be with us for a very long uh, time. I don't think there's any question that some form of 
macro stimulus is required? Is it uh, payments to households? Is it payments uh, to firms? Is it new devices for providing credit to firms and alleviating potential uh, liquidity problems? Those are all important questions uh, to debate. But I would be very, very surprised if we got out of this thing in a satisfactory way with only the small remaining monetary tools that exist and micro-targeting of uh, fiscal policy. I think we're going to have to think macro when it comes to promotion of, it, of exports and international trade, when it comes to fiscal uh, policies, when it comes to coordination uh, with uh, other countries, uh, when it comes to public investments. I think we need a combined micro and macro approach. Uh, Larry, is a recession in the United States inevitable at this point? Nothing is certain in uh, economics, but I think it is definitely more likely than not. If that's true, more likely than not, what can be done to either affect how long that lasts or how fast we come back? It may be we're dealing with how steep the curve is at this point. I think it's, uh, I think it's all the things we've been talking about, David. It's mounting the most effective response we can uh, to the virus in terms of public health. It is an embarrassment that we are as short on tests as we are for a country of our uh, affluence. It's the you know, lack of tests for a critical disease is the kind of problem uh, you talk about in Zambia, not the kind of problem you usually talk about in uh, the United States. It is, we got to make all those investments first, yesterday. We've got to be seen to be cooperating with uh, other countries to make sure that the whole global economy doesn't spiral downwards together, but everybody's working to lift everyone else up. And we've got to move to make sure that firms that are basically underlying sound in terms of their finances aren't caused to close or, worse yet, to liquidate because of the financial pressures created by the holiday from economic activity that is going to happen uh, because of uh, this uh, virus. Those are places where I think the conversation uh, needs uh, to start. But we're certainly in much more danger of doing uh, too little uh, than we are of doing too much with respect to uh, this problem. Um, I think many people think that because people were very alarmed about SARS and then SARS didn't end up being a major historic event, that it's okay to be relaxed about this. Well, the truth is that was a different disease than this disease, that some of the reason it didn't turn out to be a historic event was that a whole set of very aggressive uh, measures were taken. How concerned are you about Italy right now? They have 17 million people under quarantine, and they're looking at recession maybe spreading into France and elsewhere in Europe. I'm, I'm worried, and I'm also worried when other countries in Europe follow Italy that uh, what that's going to mean, it's probably going to be the right thing to do, but I'm worried about what that's going to mean for the... European economy. I don't see a pillar of strength and confidence that is going to pull the globe out of this. I think emerging markets don't really know what is in the midst of hitting them and what is going to hit them going forward for the most part. I think China, which was in many ways a pillar of strength in 2008 and 2009, is struggling to stay afloat with uh, positive growth. I think the situation in the United States has to be viewed with very considerable uh, concern. And Europe was having 
huge difficulty generating economic energy before any of this happened, as was Japan, which is much more caught up in uh, the COVID uh, problem. So I think the world economy is short on leadership in a direct economic provide demand sense, in a political uh, sense, <laughs> given the extent to which right. the United States has alienated uh, other countries, right. and just in a broader sense of moral credibility, which none of the major regions seem to possess uh, right now. I think it's a time when the only people who can <laughs> view the situation right. with serenity are the people like Vladimir Putin <laughs> who yeah. want to see the broad world order that right. we've had since the Second World right. War right. Um, collapse.